Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into kitchen tools. Ooh, fun. Yeah, should be pretty cool. We've got this article called 25 Cooking Tool Nouns That Make Kitchen Life Easier. Okay. For English language learners. But I think even if your English is, you know, pretty good like ours, <laughs> you can still learn some new words. Absolutely. Um, let's see. And really what we want to do is look at the names of the tools, mm -hmm. but then also how those names can help you understand the actions that we use in the kitchen. And that can actually make you a better cook. Yeah, it's true. Precision in language, I think, is one of the coolest things about the culinary world. Mm. You know, grabbing a knife is one thing. Right. But knowing when to slice or dice or mince yeah. makes all the difference. Exactly. Yeah. So let's start with just basic prep. Okay. This is stuff that everyone probably has in their kitchen already. Those are the foundations. Yeah. 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 Those are your building blocks of any recipe. Mm -hmm. And if you can master those names, A and D, the actions that they perform, it's like leveling up your cooking language skills. Okay. So first up, the knife. Mm -hmm. Seems basic, right? Right. But you wouldn't use the same knife to chop onions as you would to slice a cake, would you? No, not at all. And that's where the verbs come in. Slice implies that smooth, clean cut, perfect for a cake. Chop is more about breaking things down into smaller pieces. And then dice requires even more precision. Yeah. Like if you're making a salsa. Yes. Guys. Tiny little pieces. Okay. And then the cutting board. Yes. So important. I used to think this was just to protect my counter. Right. But, but it's also protecting the edge of your knife. Oh, that's true. Keeping that sharp. Because yeah. a dull knife, that's when things get a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And cooking gets a lot harder. Yeah. And then... um. We use this a lot, the peeler. This is to take off that thin outer layer of, you know, like a potato or a carrot. Absolutely. And peel really implies the delicate touch. It's different from pear, which, you know, might be where you remove blemishes from a fruit. Or maybe shape the fruit a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, then the mixing bowl. I mean, everyone's got mixing bowls. Yeah. But these come in different materials. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got glass, you've got steel, you've got plastic. Oh, this is where knowing your materials is key. Yeah. Glass is great for things that need to be heated gently, like melting chocolate. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Steel is really durable, perfect for heavy mixing. Mm -hmm. And plastic, it's lightweight, and you're not going to break it if you drop it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So even for something as simple as a mixing bowl, there's all these choices to make. Right. Okay. And then the grater. Oh, boy. The grater. Yeah. I used to think a grater was just a grater. But there's so many different kinds. Well, think about the texture that you want. A fine grater. Okay. It creates almost a powder, perfect for like cheese oh, yeah. or spices. Uh -huh. A coarse grater gives you bigger pieces, so like for veggies. Yeah. Where you want them to still have a little bit of bite to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm already seeing how, like, just knowing the name of the tool. Yeah. And what kind of tool you have can really make a difference in your cooking. Yeah. So we've been talking about prepping the ingredients. What yeah. about measuring them? Yes. Measure. Which is so important for baking. Absolutely. Because baking really is a science. It is a science. Yeah. And having the right tools and the vocabulary to describe those tools will ensure that your recipes turn out perfectly. Yeah. Okay, so measuring cups and spoons. I mean, everyone has these, right? Mm -hmm. But here's something that a lot of people don't realize. There are separate cups for measuring liquid versus dry ingredients. It's such a subtle difference, but it's so crucial for accuracy. Liquids need a pouring spout, and you measure those by volume. Dry ingredients, on the other hand, you level them off right. for consistency. Okay, that's good to know. Mm. Um, and then we've got the kitchen scale. I used to think this was just for, like, really serious bakers. Uh, but it's a game changer, especially when you're working with recipes from different countries yeah. where the flour types and densities can vary. Oh, that's true. The scale ensures that you're using the exact amount no matter what. It's like a universal translator. Yes, exactly. Recipes. I exactly. So we've prepped our ingredients. We've measured everything out. Now it's time to get cooking. Yeah, this is where we start talking about those cooking verbs. This is where things get really sensory. Yeah. You can almost hear the sizzle and smell those delicious aromas just by using the right words. That's true. Okay, so let's start with the saucepan. The saucepan? Yeah, such a workhorse in the kitchen. It really is. Like, think about all the things that you can do with the saucepan. You can boil things, simmer, stew. Each verb paints such a vivid picture. It does. A rolling boil for pasta, a gentle simmer, for a delicate sauce. Yeah. And then stew. Stew implies slow cooking. 
Yeah, and all those flavors. Yes. Melding together over time. Okay, and then the skillet. So this is more for those quick cooking methods. Yes, exactly. Sautéing, frying, browning. Ooh, I love those. Those words often imply a little bit of fat. Higher heat. Yeah, those crispy bits. Creating those delicious brown bits. Yeah, like on a steak or... Absolutely. On a piece of fish. So much flavor. Okay, and then we have the wok. Ah, yes, the wok. A fantastic example of how a tool's design can influence the verbs that we use. Mm -hmm. The unique shape of the woke allows for both high heat and quick tossing motions, resulting in that stir fry. Right, yeah. A technique that's so synonymous with Asian cuisine. It's fascinating how, like, language and culture come together. Yeah. In the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to something that we use a lot after cooking, the colander. Yes, the colander. It's not just for draining pasta. No, no, no. Think about rinsing fruits and vegetables, washing grains, even straining stocks and sauces. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's such a versatile tool. Okay, and then we have the whisk. This is another one that seems so simple. Right. But it can do so much in the kitchen. Oh, it really can. Think about those fluffy egg whites or a perfectly smooth sauce. Mm -hmm. It's all thanks to the whisk's ability to incorporate air. Okay, that phrase, incorporate air, is so important it is. for understanding how a whisk can change the texture of food. It's not just about mixing. It's about creating lightness and volume. Wow. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about basic prep tools. We've talked about tools for measuring. What about some of those specialty tools? Things that, you know, maybe not everyone has, but that can really step up your cooking game. These are the tools that often have very specific purposes and mastering their names and the verbs that go along with them will really impress your friends. Yeah, okay, so for example, the blender. The blender. And it's not just about blending anymore, right? No, it's not. You can puree soups mm -hmm. to make them silky smooth. You can emulsify salad dressings to create a creamy consistency. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget about crushing ice for refreshing smoothies or grinding nuts for a homemade nut butter. Yeah, the blender really is a multitasker. <laughs> okay, and then for our baking fans out there, we have the rolling pin. This is a classic tool for achieving that perfectly even thickness. Yes. When rolling out doughs for pies, cookies, pastries, precision is key in baking. Mm -hmm. And speaking of baking, let's talk about the garlic press. Oh, the garlic press. I used to think this was a little bit of a unitasker. Yeah. But you know what? It is so much easier than mincing garlic by hand. It is. Instead of mincing the garlic, the press transforms those pungent cloves into fine pieces. Yeah. And perfect for sauces or, you know, marinades. You can even put it on bread. Absolutely. Okay. And then we have the zester. All about extracting that burst of fresh flavor from citrus fruits. Yeah. Adding such a vibrant touch to both sweet and savory dishes. That's a good phrase. A burst of fresh flavor. It really does capture the essence of what the zester does. Okay. And then our last specialty tool, the pastry brush. Ah, yes. The pastry brush. A humble tool, but so essential for applying that egg wash to pastries. Oh, yeah. To make them nice and shiny. To give them that beautiful golden sheen, glazing cakes and cookies even marinating meats. Oh, that's true, yeah. So the name might seem basic, but all the things you can do with it. It really is a versatile tool. Okay, so we've talked about prepping the food, cooking the food, adding those finishing touches. What about after the meal? Oh, very important. We need to talk about food storage. Proper storage is crucial, not only for preventing food waste, but also for keeping those leftovers tasting fresh and delicious. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, food storage involves its own set of specialized terms. We've already talked about mixing bowls, which obviously can double as storage containers. Yeah. But there's a whole world of containers out there. Oh, absolutely. Glass, plastic, you've got those handy stackable sets. Yeah. Choosing the right container really depends on what you're storing. That's true. Glass is great for leftovers that you're going to reheat. Plastic's perfect for packing lunches or freezing portions. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our good friends cling film and foil, essential for wrapping up sandwiches, covering bowls, protecting food from freezer burn. Yeah, so many uses for those. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's not forget about that trusty spatula. It seems like such a simple tool. Yeah. But it can be used for so many things. Yeah, you could scrape every last bit of batter out of a bowl with a spatula. Or spread frosting on a cake. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, flip pancakes. That versatility is what makes the spatula a true kitchen essential. And finally, no kitchen is complete without a timer. 
The timer. Yeah. Whether you're baking a cake or simply boiling an egg, mm -hmm. the timer will ensure that everything is cooked to perfection. You know, I used to think timers were just about, like, not burning stuff. Right. But they're really all about getting that, like, perfect level of doneness. Exactly. Whether it's, you know, a cookie yeah. that's, like, golden brown and a little bit chewy. Mm -hmm. Or a steak that's seared on the outside but still juicy on the inside. The timer really does take the guesswork out of cooking. Yeah. Especially for those recipes that have specific time requirements. Yeah. So it's like having a personal sous chef mm -hmm. keeping an eye on things oh, while no. you do other stuff. So we've explored this whole world of kitchen tools and, you know, the verbs that we use with them. What do you think is, like, the biggest takeaway for our listeners? I think it's the power of using precise language. When you know the specific name for a tool and the verbs that describe its actions, you become a more confident and capable cook. It's like learning a new language. It is. Within a language. Yeah. But it's not just about, you know, showing off or using fancy culinary terms. No. It's about really understanding how cooking works. Absolutely. Why we do things a certain way. It's about taking control of your kitchen. Yes. And creating delicious dishes with confidence. Absolutely. And with flair. And who knows, maybe learning this new vocabulary will inspire you to try some new recipes. Yeah. Maybe even explore some different cuisines. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. Oh. Imagine you're following a recipe, and it uses a technique that you've never heard of before. Does that make you feel intimidated? Ooh. Or does it make you feel excited to learn something new? That is a great question. I think it really depends on your mindset. If you see cooking as an opportunity to learn something new, yeah. then those unfamiliar terms become exciting. Yeah. They become opportunities for discovery. Yeah, it's about embracing the unknown, expanding those culinary horizons. So instead of feeling overwhelmed by a new word or a technique, think of it as a chance to level up your skills and de your vocabulary. Exactly. Turn those, I don't know, moments into, I'm gonna learn this moments exactly and that's the beauty of language learning mm -hmm. whether it's in the kitchen or any other aspect of life it's an ongoing journey of discovery well said yeah so there you have it folks our deep dive into the world of kitchen tools yes and the vocabulary that brings them to life we hope you've enjoyed this culinary linguistic adventure you did and that you'll keep exploring the power of language yeah both in the kitchen and beyond and beyond <laughs> happy cooking everyone yeah.